Shalom, and welcome once again to Elders of GMS, giving all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Today's topic is a continuation from last week's topic and uh, the topic from the week before, which is entitled The Book of Revelation. I'm sorry, Understanding the Book of Revelation. Let me say it again. Understanding the Book of Revelation. And uh, last week, we uh, did chapters 10, 11, and 12. Uh, this week, we're going to do chapters, we're going to go over chapters 13, 14, 15, and if we have time, we'll go into chapter 16, which I don't think we're going to have time to do because there's going to, a lot of stuff should come out. Uh, so, you know, we're going to go right into it. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his, ten, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Yeah, so we're going to go through it again and we're going to break it down. And I, and, I, and I stood upon the sand of the sea. Now the sea represents Peoples, nations, tongues, kings, you can get that in uh, Revelation 17. I believe it's Revel Revelation 17, 15, if I'm not mistaken. Go ahead and read that. Uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the, where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Yeah, so it's twofold. It means the peoples of the earth, because this beast is not an actual beast. It's... Uh, actual group of uh, mighty nations. In this case, it's the, the Edomite nations, so-called European nations, uh, coming together in a mili military, political slash military uh, unit um, to, to take down other dark nations, namely the children of Israel. So they came out of the nations. They were people. In other words, this wasn't an actual monster. This wasn't a being from another planet. And the sea also represents the actual sea because the um, visions that John the Revelator uh, saw, he, he, was, he was surrounded by the, by the sea because he was on the island. All right? And this, now, for you to understand Revelation, the 13th chapter, you would also have the same understanding for Daniel, the 7th chapter. Because it says the same thing. The difference between Daniel, the, Daniel, the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, and uh, Revelation, the thirteenth chapter, is that in Daniel, the seventh chapter, it speaks about these other nations, or uh, in, in the name of other beasts, as being part of the dark nations, and the Greeks. So this this beast that John saw represented the Roman Empire, and then going forward into the future, it represents the NATO system, which I spoke about many times. The NATO system, the EU system, and America is a part of uh, NATO, a member of NATO, and they go hand in hand with each other. America, NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and the EU, a uh, European Union. All right? So let's read it again. It says, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. Yeah, now the leopard represents Alexander the Greek. If you go to... Uh uh, Daniel the uh, eight chapter. Let's go to Daniel the eight chapter and let's start from the top. Daniel chapter eight verse one. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel. Yeah, Be Belshazzar was the uh, was the the ba represented the Babylonians, the ancient Babylonians, which were Cushites. Go ahead. It says, even unto me, Daniel. After that, which appeared unto me at the first. And I saw in a vision, and, in, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam. 
And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Uli. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other. And yeah, that represents the Medio Persian Empire. These were two separate kingdoms, two separate nations coming together as one. The uh, Persians are the uh, people of Iran today because the, the term Iran came about, I believe it was 1935. It was either the Shah of Iran or the father that went before, uh, I believe it was the UN, um, and said, uh, I don't know if it was the 50s, I don't know the exact, uh, you can look it up, Bach. just Google the word uh, Iran, when did they receive the word, the name Iran, because I think it had something to do with them going before the UN years later and saying that we want to be called the people of Iran instead of the Persians. Well, anyway, the, the you had the Persians and then you had the Medes. The Medes were the sons of Japheth, uh, Japheth which were uh, dark-skinned people. The Persians were also dark-skinned people. They, they were two different nations. The uh, Persians came out of the line of Shem. The Medes uh, came out of the la line of uh, 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 Japheth. All right, you got anything, Ak? Yeah, this is from a website called um, Answers.com. The question is, when did Persia become Iran? It says, during ancient times, almost every foreigner referred to the entire country as Persia until March 21st, 1935, when Reza Shah pa Pahlavi asked the international community to call the country Iran, a name that the people of Persia themselves used to refer to their country since the San, 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 uh, Sasan, Sasanian period. Uh, Iran means land of the Aryans. The name Persia is still widely used by many Iranians, pronounced Iranian worldwide, as well as in many books, documentary, and movies. Yeah, they didn't actually go to the UN. The UN wasn't gathered yet that was before the UN but I think they you know when the UN was gathered it was when they received their seat they they received their seat under the name of uh, Iran so they were recognized by the international community as uh, the people of Iran all right then you had the uh, Medes which was uh, one of the sons of Japheth when you go to the table of nations and uh, Genesis the 10th chapter it uh, mentions the uh, the Medes. So these were two different, na two separate nations, two different nations that came together um, to set up a new uh, empire. Prior to that was the uh, Babylonians. So the Babylonian fell, and um, the Medio Persian Empire came in its stead. And I said one horn. Uh, one horn of, the, of uh, one horn was higher than the other. That represented the Persians because the Persians became greater than the uh, the Medes. All right, you got it. It says, "Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last." I saw right. The higher came up last, which were the Persians. Go ahead. It says, I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him. Read that again. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him. Why didn't it say eastward? Because the Medio Persian Empire came from the east. It mentioned Elam. The original name of the, of, uh, the East Indians. When Pakistani East Indians, that region, that vast region of land, was at one time known as the land of Elam. So they started that kingdom or that empire in the east, and they pushed westward, they pushed northward, and they pushed uh, down to the south. Now.